Hello everyone, today we are here in Boston, Massachusetts in the US and we are at the PTC LifeWorks event as you can see in the background. Uh, most of the people are currently still in sessions. We are, this is the last day uh, and we're going to do a small wrap up video as, there, as it is a public holiday in Germany today. It's just me here in the US. I'll just show you a little bit around what it's like. It's quite big here. Um, just showing you around. There's lots of PTC booths um, and there's also the partners in the background and then there's a huge stage which I can't show you right now but it's, a, it's quite spacey, uh, um, pretty, pretty well orchestrated. There's five to six thousand people they say and they had some really interesting uh, speakers here. Uh, it was hosted by one of the NBC uh, tech guys and then um, we had uh, the best-selling author of the second machine age who gave a really brilliant speech on why ai and robots are taking over the world and gave some more details into that we had um, the former cto under the obama administration here um, who basically talked about his assignment opening up the data for everyone um, and uh, i just wanted to share a few insights here from the from the show so generally um, we and, and maybe the other thing and is the PTC themselves obviously this, they put on quite a show uh, with lasers and everything uh, the CEO had a very interesting presentation where they he basically walked us through uh, one of the applications that they built so um, he basically and I'm showing you this right now this is the the customer example that they showed so this is a real this is actually how big it is it's a, called the Citropack and the customer is Bosch Rexroad, a German company, you may know them. Uh, and so this is basically a power unit that enables, uh, um, that basically converts power into hydraulics. Uh, you need it in different, different areas, in the energy sector and in, in all different sectors. And uh, these kind of things uh, exist and Bosch uh, and uh, Bosch Rexroad that is in PTC have, have uh, done a joint case study on this. Um, it is, looks exactly like this, just it's heavier and it's metal. Um, and so, um, maybe I can put it here, right here. So, what, uh, uh, what they did was, um, they basically um, teamed up not so long ago, so in, a, in the time frame of maybe three months, they put together a team of uh, both of the companies, maybe a hundred people or so, uh, the guys from Bosch Rexo told me. Uh, and um, what they did was, they totally redesigned the layout of this to make it look really nice. So PTC being a company that's uh, in the CAD business, uh, that has been in the CAD business for a long time, um, they actually did a, did a redesign of this. And then because they planted a lot of sensors in there, they were able to identify some uh, abnormal behavior uh, when they were testing this, um, specifically around the cooling efficiency of this. And with the outliers, they then basically walked through the whole process of how they simulated with the PTC software, simulated um, what a, a fix could look like. They actually designed on the computer the fix. They then uh, took that design and put it into a 3D printer uh, because uh, th that software is connected to the 3D printers. Um, and then they sort of went further along the value chain showing how they um, enabled the salespeople of Bosch using virtual or augmented reality applications and also the service technicians who in the future might have to do some um, some service. So quite a nice sort of end-to-end -end process from um, you find some abnormal, abnormal behavior in the product in use, you immediately convert that into um, redesigning the product and they showed how they redesigned uh, basically the, there's a cooling plate in here they redesigned that um, and I talked to the Bosch Rexot people they were super happy with it they basically uh, are bringing this to market right now I mean there's not they haven't done this in on a large scale yet but they're actually bringing this to market uh, for them this is a really cool story they're talking about not selling this as a piece but actually on a paper use so they're also thinking about paper use models but they aren't there yet um, but the thing exists and you can you can purchase I think this thing not the plastic one but the real one costs around uh, two to five thousand euros or dollars um, I found this story quite impressive just uh, along the lines of what we did in our last videos most impressive most disappointing most insightful I found it quite impressive it was a good story uh, I think they put a lot of effort into this and it's one of those customer success stories presented here IOT enabling uh, 
some older or legacy technology. Um, let me talk about the stuff that I found most disappointing. I mean, you have to always be a little bit careful uh, what you find disappointing. Uh, I, I don't have that much to say. I would have hoped for a few more large-scale customer deployments, but I think it's an, it's an IoT thing right now that the whole industry is in pilot phase. I mean, even this was the, the big showcase and it's right now just, a, you know, it's just starting to get rolled out. This is what we're seeing in IoT all over the place right now. So um, I'm, I was hoping to get a few more um, bigger ones, uh, and um, I I couldn't really find them. I think I think it's not a PTC thing. I think it's actually an IoT thing. Um, maybe some other insights, or maybe the most insightful. Uh, one of the things I liked being a German, the um, PTC CEO Jim Heppelman was asked during the uh, press Q and A which country do you think is most advanced in adopting this IoT solution? And he said Germany. He basically said the Germans are the, the, the furthest advanced. Um, he, he obviously has a very manufacturing heavy uh, look at it, but I mean, PTC also does work in telcos, in uh, healthcare, in uh, retail and other areas. So um, I, it, it sort of mirrors what, what, what we've been seeing, but um, it's, uh, it was a nice, uh, you know, comment from someone who basically has quite a good overview. Uh, some other insights, uh, interesting too. So, so the whole thing here was, you know, obviously PTC showed what they are doing, but uh, they were uh, uh, announcing the new ThingWorks 8 platform, which is an upgrade to the older one. They were announcing some of the apps uh, that go with it, and they have some pre for in the manufacturing environment. They have some apps. Uh, to control assets and to show assets, some dashboards which are basically ready-made for the factory managers. Um, and, uh, uh, and along with that, another thing that I thought was very interesting is that they are changing their pricing model um, from something which apparently has been perceived as too complicated. Uh, generally, there w it was, it was, it was, it was, um, the pricing was around something called property rights, I believe, which was, m there were four components, some of it being the data, the number of assets, um, some other components, and customers didn't understand what that meant in terms of pricing. So they are introducing a pricing which is solely based on number of connected devices or assets, um, which is to simplify everything. Uh, and uh, it's interesting because we've had a lot of discussions with other people. How do you price an IoT platform? Uh, and that's an uh, uh, and so that's that's very interesting that they're simplifying it um, to make it to make it easier for customers. Obviously, PTC has a they call so-called so -called, uh, land and expand strategy, um, in which they offer a freemium, so a 30, 60, even 120 day trial, um, in which you can use the platform for free, and then they hope to uh, upgrade you to uh, um, something which is paid. Uh, another one is they really push the ecosystem. I think everyone in IoT does right now. They, have around, they say they have around 450 ecosystem partners in IoT, ThingWorks specific. I talked to one or two of them. Uh, I talked to some uh, really nice guys from Turkey who are smaller. You could probably call them a startup. Uh, DVM they're called. And uh, they, were, they are implementing a lot of different things in Turkey and in other areas in Dubai and, and uh, around smart agriculture, around smart energy um, on uh, the ThingWorks platform and being sort of in their partner network, being uh, almost like a reseller, but they basically white label that and, and, and develop solutions. And uh, you see, really see that the market is going there to develop stuff with partners like them, also with partners like um, Gateway, like HPE is here. Um, there are a few other, there are a couple of um, uh, consulting firms here, uh, Deloitte, uh, Accenture, um, who are or s somewhere in between consulting and system integration, um, who, who they're partnering up with. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, then one more thing that I, I sort of um, took away from this, I, t I asked customers and I asked uh, um, ecosystem partners why why thing works I didn't ask PTC because that's obviously their story but um, I mean the message was pretty clear um, thing works and apparently enables people to really go to market faster and the number that PTC says is by 10 10 X um, one of the customers said it's probably not that big but it's big so that's one of the, the key 
um, differentiators. The other one is um, obviously the, the, the interplay of, of CAD, PLM, and augmented reality and IoT, that it, it, there is a certain use case. So the guys from, from this thing here, Bosch Rexel, told me that one of, one of, they had been uh, using the um, PLM software uh, anyways, and, and so they were able to just um, transfer that, um, uh, that data from one tool to the other, which made it very easy for them. Uh, so that's another selling point. Uh, and so it's basically those three, I would say. Uh, so wrap, wrapping things up, uh, I think it was a really good show. Uh, also lots of people in the IoT industry that attended, uh, both from a, from a um, company and, par and partner perspective, but as well as on the press and media side, um, lots of coverage um, and, and some really good. Uh, there's a couple of more uh, very interesting talks coming up this afternoon. So I'm looking forward to that. Uh, flying back this tonight to Germany and um, I have to say, I'm, I'm, I'm really curious to see in the next year um, how these things are evolving. And again, I will track how many of those pilot projects that they've shown here are actually then turning into reality. Again, IoT markets are smaller than uh, a lot of people may think. Uh, and um, we're still waiting for that big breakthrough. Uh, I believe it's going to happen in the next one or two years. And I will let you know when I, when I have a certain answer to that. All right. See you soon.